started a series unveiling the fundamentals of success. And I'd like us to recall back again, everyone wants to succeed. Nobody intentionally makes up his mind to fail. Everyone wants to succeed. Whether born again or not born again, he wants to succeed. There is a feeling that goes with success. There is also a feeling that goes with failure. Am I correct? There is a feeling that goes with success. There is also a feeling that goes with failure. And we are meant to understand that you cannot be born of God and end up a failure. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Like begets like. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. So God wants you to succeed. And we read that scripture, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Please, studio, can we recap that scripture again? For I know that thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an unexpected end. Another translation. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans of good and not of disaster to give you a future and a hope. For I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome, you will end well. Yeah. I say you will end well. Yeah. Final outcome. This evening we are going to look at the forces of faith. The forces of faith. I've come to understand that many think and feel that faith is not needed for success. But I've come to let you know what you have never known before. Nobody succeeds in the energy of the flesh. Faith is a vital force that makes for all round success. All round success. Here it this evening, success is a spiritual thing because it is ordained of God for you. And whatever is good will be contended and contested by the devil. If faith is not needed, why is everybody not prospering yet? Many are walking. If faith is not needed, why is not every businessman succeeding? And yet they are investing money. Why are they not succeeding? The race is not to the swift. Neither yet battle to the strong. Neither yet favor to men of skill. He said, time and chance happen to them all. He didn't end there. He said, it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. He said, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. 
So you can walk and walk yourself out and not see the taste of success. No wonder many are walking like elephants and they are eating like ants. Thank God for work. <laughs> but I want to let you know there is need for faith. We are just talk, talking about the scripture in the book of James that says faith without work is dead. Do you know in that passage of scripture, the same number of times it, faith was mentioned, that is the same amount of time work was mentioned. So you must balance your faith with your works. Every time success is in view, there are oppositions to contend with. We will want to know why we need faith because... We have been using energy and the thing has been failing. We have been using might. We have been using skill, but it has not been delivering the way it should deliver. No wonder people that have had a taste of failure, they don't feel like trying again. To everyone that wants to succeed, he must contend with discouragement. There are discouraging forces that fight success. He must contend with discouragement. No wonder God echoed to the ear of Joshua. Be thou courageous. Be thou very courageous. He's got a stamina. Why? Because in a bid to see or actualize success, there are some discouraging forces hovering around the There are forces that depress people. David said, why are thou downcast, O my soul? Why are thou disquieted within me? He said, well, yeah, praise the Lord. Hear me? You might have failed. Does not make you a failure. Failure is just an experience. It's not an identity. The fact that you failed does not make you a failure. You have only identified one way it cannot work. And I want to let you know, there is no true success that have not tested the bitter pills of failure. They asked Papa one time, have you ever made mistake? He said, I have been more wrong than you think that I have been right. I have been more wrong, meaning I have made plenty mistakes in the process than you think that I've been more right. After dealing with the forces of depression, you need to also deal with the forces of rejection. <laughs> forces of rejection. You want to succeed? There are many things you need to contend with. I'll be, I've mentioned to now, we are on what? Rejection. Do you know the environment can reject your business? Reject your work? When I was a cop, I was rejected 13 times. 13 good times. My father called me then said that the CP want to see me 
that they want me back in Port Harcourt. I made sure I didn't pick that call again. On my way to NYC Secretariat, something happened. I jammed the man that sat beside me while we were coming from Onicha to Lokoja. So he said, what are you doing here? I said, sir, I came and said, come back. He said, ah! He said, what's happening? I told him, I've been rejected 13 times. He said, oh, no, no. I said, no, 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 but I must get a place. I told him I must get a place. He said, my friend is the chief geologist in ADP. Let me just give you a note. You go and meet him. I got there. They accepted me. For a good 10 months, I was not paid. That's another level of what? The last month of our passing out was the only month that they released money to rehabilitate a few boreholes. And I only worked for two weeks. But I never lacked money. That's the only different thing. The rejection was heavy. In fact, friends even began to suggest to me, man, what are you wasting your time there? No work for you there. Why don't you tell them to reject you? You go to another place. You know, as a copper, you, re you request for rejection. It's a spirit. <laughs> spirit of rejection. So I told them that, no, 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 no. I'm okay. At least I have the opportunity to sit down and read and do whatever I want to do. And uh, if I want to go for my business, I go for my business. But I learned one lesson. Don't quit and never give up. Don't what? And never do what? Now, do you want to tell me that I was not praying then? Do you want to tell me that I didn't fast? There are real forces. For a great door and effectual is open unto us. But there are many adversaries. Many. Many. So you must deal with rejection. You must deal with it. By never giving up. I like the way Papa puts it. If you insist, the devil cannot resist. If you insist, the devil can never resist. These are the things that make people quit. They give up hope. They surrender. I don't think I'm needed there. I don't think that's my place. But hear me, it is, it is the same old trick that the enemy has been playing that he will still need to replay. After dealing with rejection, you need to deal with the forces of fear. Fear is an enemy of success. He will tell you, don't try it. You will fail again. I remember one young man I prayed for, is it two years or three years ago? He said, he keeps hearing the voice, you will fail again. You will fail again. The voice keeps coming, you will fail again. I said, okay, from today you will hear another one. You will succeed. I said, bring your ear. I'm not joking, no. I say, this one you will be hearing now. You will succeed. You will succeed. You will succeed. You will succeed. I anointed his ear physically. The reason why I anointed him, now, I was not trying to be sarcastic, or, but I want him to understand it to his level. I hear what I'm saying now. I was driving the point to his level. You will succeed. My sheep hear it, my voice. The voice of a stranger. They will not do what? Follow. So I now asked him, which voice do you want to hear? He now said, you will succeed. I 
I remember I was posted to a station. They told me that no pastor has ever succeeded here. That uh, I should just be praying so that they will transfer me to another place. I was welcomed with the message of failure, church members. Not just church members, deacons and deaconess. So what I did was to, first of all, I started walking around the church. Immediately I finished that, I called Bishop Aremu and said, Sir, this is where I am. And this is what I'm saying here. I said, we are praying for you. We are expecting your success. We are not expecting any bad news from you. We are expecting your success. That was the only thing he told me. Meaning, if you like, succeed. If you like, do what? As I made up my mind, hear this. Once you make up your mind, there is what we call inner will. Everyone here carries what we call inner will. And script, um, a wise man said, where there is a will, God will make a way. It's Bablika. <laughs> In the days of his power, his people shall be what? Willing. Are you willing to succeed? Are you sure you are willing to succeed? I, need to, I needed to kill fear. All the people that have come, no one has succeeded. The next thing I had, all the people that, that have come, all of them ended up becoming member, beggars in the hand of members. I said I will be an exception. I said I will be an exception. So you must conquer fear. And fear is the enemy of faith. I repeat, success is not a natural thing, it's a spiritual thing. You must conquer fear. The next thing that you will need to contend with Is the force of laziness. Many want to succeed, but they are too lazy. They are too lukewarm. Everybody is looking for ready made. Ready made wife, ready made husband. Should I tell you something? Whether you are looking for a ready-made wife or a ready-made husband, you are a liability. And nobody wants to marry a liability. Am I saying the truth? Everybody wants breakthrough. Breakthrough has work. Oh. Breakthrough is not cheap talk. Breakthrough is hard work. You must conquer laziness. Scripture says, He that must not walk, let him not eat. Say it to the righteous. It shall be well with your soul. But look at the next thing that follows. It says, He shall eat the fruit of his what? Another translation says, He shall eat the fruit of his labor. Which means, fruit gets labor. You must conquer laziness. You must conquer complacency. You must conquer prayerlessness. They say that an idle man is what? If you are not busy doing the right thing, Satan will keep you busy. I'm mentioning these things now because I said before, everybody wants to succeed. But there are forces that fight your success. 
there are forces. Unseen forces. They come upon you unannounced. Knowing fully well that success has enemies, there is need for us to depend on the help of God. There is need for us to depend on the help of God. There is need for us to depend on the hand of God. There is need for us to depend on the power of God. No one succeeds in the energy of the flesh. Every plan that God has made for our success will require the hand of God for that plan to scale through. For that plan to scale through. Whether it's marital success or financial success or career success, you need faith to scale through. You need faith. You need to build up your confidence in God. You need to trust God to help you go through. You need to trust God to move from one level of success to another level of success. Because the day you, start, you stop trusting God, your flesh will fail you. No wonder scripture says, by flesh shall no man prevail. You can't. If succeeding is that cheap, I hope you know that everybody would have taken this thing. If succeeding is that cheap, everybody will have collected it. There won't have been any need for trust. So if you really want to succeed, in as much as you want to work hard, you need to build your trust in God. You need to build your trust. You need to build your trust by building your faith. You need to build your trust by building your faith. <laughs> if you have little faith and you are desiring great success, you are a liar. You must build yourself. You must build your faith to great faith. You must build your faith. Don't forget the message the other day, passion for the faith. Hear me? If you want to go high, you must jack your faith high. Scripture says concerning David, day by day, God sent men to help David until he became a mighty host. But I've understood through such of scripture that David was always asking for the help of God. Send help unto me for vain is the help of man. He said through God we shall do valiantly and tread down all our enemies. Success has enemies. The enemies are always around you. The enemies of your success, they are always around you. Some will come through the people you call friends. Some will come through the people you call acquaintances. Hear me, not everybody is happy that you want to succeed. Some are coming to draw the information that they will use in scattering their success. Make no mistake about it. Send help unto me. Why was he praying for help? For vain is the help of man. He said, through God, we shall do valiantly. Another enemy of success is the enemy called disappointment. Who has been disappointed before? If you are sincere, raise your hand. Oh. Have you been disappointed before? Let me tell you one, just one of my story. God warned me early. He woke me up one morning after I just came back from the class. Around 5 a.m., he said, put not your trust in man of what account is he. I was now wondering, is it in the Bible? Do you know why? 
as at that time, I, I don't know if I've shared this story before. As at that time, I was already making plans with my friend how we are going to set up our own company, how we are going to work. This is that. The father was the chief accountant of Abiola. Then, we are just making good plans. I say, I told him that my, my in-law is working in elf. This is that. All of a sudden, God turned out that word. Put not your trust in man. Of what account is he? Immediately that word came. It came like a thunderbolt. I felt, I felt wounded. I felt wounded. I was looking sorrowful. I was looking like someone in a painful mood. And that day happened to be convocation day. So we all gathered to see our seniors wearing the gown and holding their something by their hand. So I just sat down, my head bowed down. So one of my friends, Samuel Akiri, they just came. He said, Tony, what's happening? You are not yourself today. I said, I'm just thinking about something. He said, bros, relax. 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 He said, let me tell you something. You know. Will you believe it that my mother's brother is one of the managers in Chevron? And yet I stayed my complete four months. He didn't help me to do IT. He said, don't put your trust in anybody. Oh, only trust God. I just looked at him. I said, flesh and blood did not reveal it to you. I said, you are speaking to me by the Holy Ghost. He said, don't put your trust in... By now, you should have understood me. The moment you misbehave, I shift you. Meet. I don't look for you again. There are many people that will be shifted. T.D. Jack said, not everybody you meet will follow you to your promised land. Some you will know them for three months. Some for six months. For, for one year. Some for five years. Anyone that crosses five years may go far with you. No, not everybody that starts with you will finish well with you as your friend. So if anybody disappoints you now, dust your leg, continue your journey. It is part of the process. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? We only met for a season. When that season pass, don't renew the season. There are friendships that must not... The moment the season elapses, quit, man. Continue your journey. If not, you will carry a lot. So he said, Tony, relax. Relax. My mother's brother was a manager in Chevron. He couldn't help me to do IT of four months. I started telling him what God told me that morning. After that day. Say with me, after that day. After that day. <laughs> the moment you do, eh? I just shift. Too. Shift corner, leave you alone. I no one get heart attack. My journey is still far. To begin to carry people like a bag of cement. No way! Have people failed Papa before? Plenty. Disappointment, you will meet them on the way. Even in marriage, in relationship, you will meet plenty of disappointment. Some sisters, when they meet disappointment, their face will just change. They will look like someone that is suffering from typhoid uh, uh, Plus three. They will just shrink. They will so emaciated. You'll be wondering, what thing they do you? They will do tests. They will not see anything. It's what we call the disease of disappointment. Am I saying the true sisters? Some, some of them to eat self is trouble. They will be begging them, eat now, eat now, eat small now. It's small now. Should I tell you something? Thank God the man disappointed you. Do you know why? If that man had married you and you ended up in hell, what would you tell God? Hey, but pastor, I loved him so much. I bet pocket your love for pocket. 
reserve it for, for someone that is real. Hear me? Anything that didn't work out, God allowed it to be so. Don't go and die for nothing. You'll be dreaming. You'll be seeing the man in the dream. You'll be warning him in the dream. Even in the dream, oh, are you normal? He says, still appearing in my... Oh, yeah, go and meet him. Go and meet him. He's still appearing in your dream. There was one of our deacons, oh no, one of our elder, well-respected elder. In fact, I still love that man today. I had one daughter who just graduated from law, learned colleague. They have too many learned sense. So she just saw this young man. The young man was doing well, was doing her flashing, flashing her with car. After the marriage, they were telling her, why don't you wait? Let's pray first. Pastors, let me repeat it. When it comes to let's pray, sisters hate to hear that word. I say the truth and I lie not. When it comes to let's pray or let's go and see pastor, for what? Why are you bringing pastor into this matter? Before you know one thing, I go see one vision for you. You go see one thing for you. <laughs> She ignored all counsels, ignored prayer, went ahead. And you know, when it comes to such decision, you are alone. I say you are alone. She entered. The wedding was glamorous. People came, they brought gifts. After they packed their gift and entered their house, two nights after, she was on the bed with the man. All of a sudden, she didn't see the man again. So, with an eye again, she began to deal like this. She didn't see him here. She entered. Go another place. She now saw where red, yellow, black, white, candle, green. The man with his black and red sat down and was doing his incantation. She did like this. She quietly opened the door with her nightgown to call for her life. <laughs> if they had told her, don't go, she would have felt disappointed. But she entered. Waiting she see. Her mouth no fit talker. She take off for her life. Till today, oh, till today, till today, as I'm talking with you, she vowed never to go back. You know, that's the new tactics that some young men do now. You heard of the one that happened in Lagos about three or four months ago. A young man just came to the east, married the girl, took her to Lagos, butcher her. Butcher, butcher. The young girl did not even by any mistake to have a premonition that something was wrong with this guy. Hear me. There are some people you need, to, you need to look with your spiritual eye. Lord, is this man okay? Lord, is this girl okay? There was a young brother from Redeem. I will tell you plenty of story today. There was a young brother from Redeem. Very spiritual and sound. He has already entered into the relationship with the brother. The sister. They've paid the bride price. But every time. Fervent in spirit. Every time in spirit, the Holy Ghost will tell him, don't go ahead. Don't go ahead. Once have the Lord spoken. Twice have we heard. The Holy Ghost will tell him, don't go ahead. Don't go ahead. Guess what happened? He was still doing religiosity, following, they will buy everything on the wedding day. Say with me, on the wedding day. You know, there are weddings that choir will sing and sing and sing and sing. Oh, the bros never come or the girl never come. Singing has passed 11 o'clock. 11.30. So they were waiting for the young man. The young man switched off the phone. All of a sudden, the girl said they should carry her in the car. She entered the car. She said she knows where the young man is. She drove straight to the place. 
entered the house, met the young man in the toilet where he was doing pa 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 pa. <laughs> <laughs> the girl opened the door. Do you know what the girl said? Now your God saved you today. She didn't cry. Now your God saved you today. That one was sent from the marine hell just to deliver the brother. He said, Kia. Which one is Kia? <laughs> now, let me tell you. You need faith. Faith also is a spirit. We have the same spirit of faith. You are not just believing God. The spirit of God will bear witness to what you claim to believe. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? As one of our sisters was just spending her money for the young man. Anytime she travels abroad, she will be the one. She will buy food from Nigeria. She will cook. So one certain one, she traveled. She didn't tell the young man she was coming. When she landed there, I see another woman. They can go. She take off. She cry, come back. But Mumu no go agree. I they go again. Now let me tell you, I'm making reference to all these things. There are things fighting your success. That is why you can't succeed without faith at work for you. You can't. Even if you do, you will lose it. If you must succeed and go for in success, because success is in succession. If you succeed today, get ready to succeed tomorrow. If you succeed tomorrow, get ready to succeed next tomorrow. Now, what is the real meaning of success? Success is succeeding in succession. The path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. If you are not succeeding in succession, you are not in success. And for you to really succeed in succession, there are giants in every man's promised land. There are giants. There are giants. God told them, you enter Canaan, filled with milk and honey. They sent ten spies. When the spies got there, they saw giants. They were afraid. He said, we be not able to go into the land. Joshua and Caleb said, shut up! We are able! We are able! Fear almost killed those people. And if you say you are not able, you are not able. You are not able will affect you spiritually. It will affect you physically. No wonder. Ephesians 6 verse 16. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith. Studio, put that scripture. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. Oh, not some. Take, you must take faith. Above all, take faith. God said you will marry, take faith. There are people that will contend with the marriage. God said you will build a house, take faith. If not, forces will fight you. There are people that have built house 12 years, 15 years. They have not finished the house. But scripture says, he that began it a good work in you is faithful to complete it to the end. So if you start something and it's not going well, know that forces are fighting it. So every plan of God for your life will be contended and contested. No one that I say, I've given into the hand, seeing on the Amorites, king of Hishbon and his land. He said, begin to contend with him in battle and do what? Possess it. If you don't contend, you can't possess content and you need faith to contend with these forces they are not they are not contending against you with word of mouth they are contending against you spiritually there are giants in every man's promised land there are giants any promise of scripture that must come to pass in your life forces will fight you are you hear what i'm saying now 
they will fight you. You don't fight them in the energy of the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imagination, and every high thing that has exalted itself above the knowledge of God. Above the knowledge of God. Why is it that every time they are promised you they will give you that contract or they will give you that paper, suddenly they will change their mind? There is a force fighting you. Oh, you don't know before? Some we call it embargo of limitation. Oh, you must not cross this level. Oh, you must not cross this level. You must fight what wants to hinder you from moving to your next level. If you don't fight it, you remain there. If you don't fight it, you will transfer it to your children. That is why where your success level reach, that's where your children start. You must give them a good start. I say you must give them a good start. So success requires a fight. And you need faith to fight for you. No one that scripture says fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight. You want to succeed? Men, thank God for work. But we need faith to triumph. Concerning Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, scripture said that they subdued kingdom. They subdued kingdom. Let's read it in Hebrew chapter 11 from this. Let's take it from verse 33. Who through faith Subdued kingdom, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. Stop the mouth of lions. Stop the mouth of lions. When evil mouths are crying out against your success, cry out against them. That's why scripture says, No weapon, form no fashion against you shall prosper. Any tongue that shall rise against you, he said, Any tongue. Any tongue. He didn't call on believer's tongue. It can be a pastor's tongue. It can be a deacon's tongue. It can be a deaconess tongue. Any evil tongue smites their head. That is what scripture told me. Any tongue. Whether it's your uncle's tongue. Or your auntie's tongue. I remember one, one lady. Her own auntie tied her. That she would not marry. I said, you only have two koboko. One to flog her for her head to correct. Two, the second koboko to flog her to die. Choose your koboko. What did I say? Choose your koboko. I won't choose for you. There are wicked, that is what we call household wickedness. Now, do you know that the major enemies of success, they are household wickedness? Household wickedness. But when she, de she, when she made up her mind, <laughs> when vengeance came upon the auntie, she confessed, but it was too late. She still died. I summarize with this. Success is not for gentle people. If you are too gentle, you can never succeed. May they allow me now. No, I need to find anybody trouble. Yami, you know mean? whether you are looking for anybody's trouble or you are not looking for anybody's trouble, somebody is looking for your trouble. But scripture says, I will trouble them that trouble you. I will recompense them with tribulation. Do you want to succeed? Get ready to fight. Lastly, hear this. If you don't grow your faith to succeed, you will grow in failure. 
you will groan. G R O O A N. You will groan. You will groan. If you don't grow your faith, all this one, they are begging you to read Bible. You are not yet ready to succeed. If you are truly ready to succeed, my son, pay attention to my word. Incline thy ears to my saying. He said, Let them not depart from thy heart. For they are life unto thee and health unto thy whole what? Flesh. Do you truly want to succeed? You must embrace the manual. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the Lord, Joshua 1 and verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart. If it departs, you cannot take your part. So growing your faith is a compulsory tax if you must be growing in success. And lastly, as you grow your faith, you grow in assurance. You grow in confidence. That with God on my side, I will break through. With God on my side, I will get to my next level. With God on my side, that door will open. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. But for with God, nothing shall be impossible. So if there are many oppositions, if God is with you, opposition will clear. I say opposition will clear. From today, no one of you will be on the same spot. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Hear me and hear me well. Rise up to your feet, everybody. Rise up to your feet right now. Take this point. The reason why you need to grow your faith is to increase your dependency on God. To increase your dependency on God. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. As you increase your dependency on God, he releases his might for you. You break through in impossible places. Where others go and doors are shut against them. When you go, doors open for you. That will be your testimony. So where your faith stops growing, that's where you stop succeeding. Where your faith stops growing, you stop going forward. Where your faith stops growing, doors start shutting against you. Where your faith stops growing, you begin to experience hardship. But you will not fail again. I say you will not fail again. In one minute, I'd like you to lift up your voice. Lord, any mysterious force contending with my success, by the mystery of the blood, let the mystery of the wicked be destroyed. Let the manipulation of the enemy be scattered. Any mysterious force, any mysterious force contending with my success, Contending with my breakthrough. Contending with the plan and purpose of God for my life. By the mystery of the communion. By the mystery of the blood. Let the manipulation fail. Let the manipulation fail. Let the sorcery fail. Let the manipulation fail. Let the sorcery fail. Any unseen force. Any manipulating force, any contrary force, contending with my success by the mystery of the communion, by the mystery of the blood, let the manipulation of the wicked be disappointed. In Jesus' name we pray. That's prayer one. Whoever is the enemy on assignment to fight my success. God said, I will be an enemy to your enemy and an adversary to your adversary. Any agent of the devil on assignment against me, against my success, I prophesy against you, swell up and die. Don't say amen for me, say your own. 
Lift up your voice and pray now. Any agent of the devil on assignment against my success, against my breakthrough, against my advancement, against my change of story, I invoke the vengeance fire of God upon your head. Swell up and die. In the name of Jesus. Witchcraft agents. Money dream spirits. On assignment against my success. Swell up and die. In the name of Jesus. Swell up and die. Are you agent of the devil that has vowed a vow to fight my breakthrough, to fight my success? I command the vengeance fire of God upon your head. Be destroyed by fire. In Jesus' name we pray. As you partake of this communion, whatever is in you that is hindering you from succeeding by the mystery of the flesh and the blood, let the yoke be destroyed. Yeah. Whoever cast a spell on you that you will not go beyond where you are now, I decree by the blood of Jesus, let the spell be destroyed. Yeah. That amen is too weak. Any embargo placed over your head that you will not go beyond where you are by the mystery of the communion, let that limitation be destroyed. Before this year is over, where your enemy vowed you will not reach, you will cross it. What they vow you will not get, you will get it more than enough. Say amen like a believer. Yeah. Anyone watching your success in their monetary mirror to scatter it. Let thunder and the God of Oyerebo smite them dead. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. As you take this communion, you enter your next level of success. Yeah. Socially, day. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.